export secret. All right, they're not really secrets. So that's a bit of a YouTube trope, but hopefully there's some stuff in here you didn't know and you find useful. Welcome, ladies and gents, to the second video in the 12 days of Mr. Alex Techmas, where we make a bunch of videos in the run up to Christmas, brought to you by our good friends over at Audio. There is a little linky doodah down in the description below to take you over to Audio if you're in the need for some music and sound effects, and you can use the code Alex70 to get your first year for just $59 of the audio pro license so if that's your thing there's a little linky give it a click go have a look here wildcards so here we are on the deliver page and if we have a look at the file name you can see mine says timeline name and then if i was to add this to the render queue it would change that to be the actual name of the timeline that we currently have open that's called a wildcard and it basically pulls system information to be used as the file name to do this, all you want to do is put the percentage sign in the file name box and you'll get a big list of all of the wildcards that you can actually add. So we could do timeline name or timeline index. But there's a load of other really cool stuff. So if we do timeline name, for example, then you can add additional characters, just regular type stuff in there. And then if we do another one, let's add something like time. So you can do time 12 hours. So that will actually look at your system time and then put the current time in the file name. So then you know exactly when this timeline was rendered. So if I add this now to the render queue, timeline one at 2.14 p.m. Or we could have used the 24 hour clock or we could use the codec, the version, the framing chart, day, night, frame rates, all of this different stuff. Now, there's another thing which goes really handy with this one. Now, this is something that I generally don't think I knew and I wish I did know because it would have made my life easier and it goes perfect with the wildcards and with saving your own custom export presets, which I'll show you in a second. So this one is simply called subfolder. All you need to do, jump over to this file tab and there is file subfolder. So if I just type output in here or outputs or whatever you want to call it, we've already got our timeline name and our date wildcards within our file name and the location is set just to be generally the correct folder right there. Then if I add this to the render queue, it will go to timeline secrets, timeline one, and then today's date, which doesn't look right. But as soon as I hit render all, it's actually going to create this outputs folder for us. And when it renders this out, it's going to dump it in deliver secrets, outputs, and then it's going to create the actual file. So now that it has started rendering, we can straight away go to deliver secrets and we can see we have a new folder called outputs. And there it is. Another really useful thing, super quick. When it has finished, you can simply right click on the render queue and there is an option open file location and it will take you straight to that folder within Windows or iOS or whatever. So you can just grab this and upload it wherever you need to upload it. Now, none of those wildcards or that subfolder are all that useful unless you save all of this into a custom export preset, which is my next little tip. So once you've finished setting all of your settings, your format, your codec, your encoder, your resolution, your quality, your timeline name with your wildcards, and of course that file subfolder, rather than having to do this every single time, simply click on these three little dots in the top right hand corner of this big column on the left, and there is an option, save as new preset. So let's just call this one YouTube subfolder or something like that. You can then select an icon so it's nice and easy to recognize and you can add it to the quick exports. So I'm going to give that a tick and then hit save. Now from this little menu on the very left hand side, which will appear if you'd never set any of these presets up before, you can see you've got all of the presets. I can just give that a click. It'll pull through those wildcards. It'll pull through my subfolder and any of the settings. And then I can just add to the render queue and I'm good to go. Next up, we got a couple of really, really simple ones, but just on the off chance you don't know them. First one, switching timelines. So if your project has multiple timelines, like my one does here, you can add them both to the render queue without leaving the deliver page. So I've got my YouTube 4K30 here, and let's just use one of my presets. We'll add this to the render queue. And then if we simply change the timeline by clicking on this little drop down here, 
We can jump straight to this short form 1080p, which doesn't really have anything on it, but you get the idea. I could then add this one to the render queue. So you don't need to jump back to the edit page, change your timeline, and then come back. You can do it all directly from here. But there's another way. If you want to start adding different timelines to your render queue, you don't actually even need to do that from the deliver page because you can do that directly from the edit page. So this project here has got a bunch of different timelines. You can see we've got loads here and I didn't name them particularly well, but let's ignore that. But if we go to this one here called Waffle, we can right click any of these timelines, go to timelines at the very top, and then there is an option add to render queue using, and it will pull up any of those presets that you've created. So we've got some H.264 master, H.265 master, and then a ProRes as well. But then we've got all of my custom export presets. So I can go YouTube 30. It then asks me for the export path. So let's just jump that wherever we want. Jump over to the deliver page, and this will be ready and waiting for us within the render queue. Neato! So then you've got multiple different timelines set up within your render queue, and then you can just render them all out in one big go. Now my next tip is the fact that you can do that across different projects. So if you've got a bunch of projects going on and you want to just render a bunch of things out so you can leave your computer going for an hour and then go have a cup of coffee or whatever, you can. If you open up the render queue on the deliver page, then click the three little dots in the top right hand corner and there is an option show all projects. Now, if you've never really looked at this before, this may take a, a short while to load because this will give you all of the projects that you've recently rendered out. So I've got about, I've got 224 of them. Now I'm gonna click the three little dots again. I'm gonna clear all, or we can do clear rendered. And that's just gonna clear this render queue. So now we have nothing within our render queue. Now let's do that handy method we did a moment ago. I'm gonna to go to this waffle and we'll do timelines, add to the render queue and we'll do YouTube 30, set the location, happy days. Now, if we go to a completely different project, let's go with this one, we'll locate my timeline, we'll right click, we will timelines, add to the render queue, YouTube 30, same again. Now, if we go to the deliver page, because we are in this show all projects, we will see all of the projects we've added to the render queue. So we've got that waffle from the M Reels project, and we've got this YouTube 4K30 from the My Workflow project. We can click on this little dot on the left, hold and reorder them. So we can move them up and down. And then we can either select all of them within the render queue and then click render all, or simply make sure none of them are selected and hit render all. Or if we just want to render one of them currently, we can just select that one and it will say render one. Next up, you don't need to render the entire project if you don't want to. You can select a particular portion to render out. So on the deliver page down here, we can see our timeline. Now by default, it will say render entire timeline in this box here. So the entire timeline is gonna be rendered out. If we only want to render out a section, put your playhead at the beginning of the bit that you want to export and hit the I key on your keyboard then go to the end and hit the O key on your keyboard to mark the out, and then you will just be rendering this section. Then you just customize the export settings as you usually would, add to the render queue, and you will just be exporting that particular section. Now to get rid of that, either hit the Alt or Option and X key, which will get rid of that in and out and just take you back to the entire timeline version, or alternatively, you simply change this render box from in and out range to entire timeline. Next, we've got two relatively quick ones. The first one just allows you to see slightly more detail about what you're actually rendering out within the render queue. Click on these three little dots once again within your render queue, and there is an option, show job details. And then for each of the items within your render queue, you will be able to see the resolution, the codec and the encoder, the frame rate. I think this one is the audio tracks. Then we've got the audio bit rate and the actual duration. It just gives you that little bit more information so you know exactly what you are rendering out. Now the next one may potentially speed up your renders. How much will depend on kind of what you're doing in your system and all that other stuff. But it's such a quick and easy thing to change that I'm gonna show you and hopefully it does have a positive impact. So just above your preview screen, you've got these three little dots and there is updates during render. Now I believe the default is minimal. 
But let's just change this to on for now. And then let's just render this project. And as you can see, what it's gonna do is show us every single frame. Now that can be put in additional stresses on your system because it's not just rendering things out, it's also having to show it you back again in real time. Instead of that, go back to this updates during render, you can change this to minimal. Now what this is gonna do is it's gonna look kinda choppy because I think it just shows you roughly one frame every second. And that potentially, because it's showing you less, may mean that more of your system resources are available to actually do the render. So you may see some improvements. Now that's what I like to leave it as because you can see what it's doing. You're not just kind of waiting for nothing and it's kind of a nice middle ground. But if you want to really optimize this, change the updates during render to off and we'll try this once more. And now the preview screen won't update at all. It's still doing the render in the background. We can see our playhead moving down here, but it just doesn't have to show us anything, which again could help speed things up. And last but not least, if you use the render cache a lot on the edit page, which caches kind of everything you're doing on the timeline, particularly useful if you're doing lots of fusion-y stuff, it basically renders it in the background so that you don't have to render it in real time when you're playing things back, which should potentially give you smoother playback on the timeline. When you're doing your export, you can choose to use that render cache rather than having to re-render it again now that you're exporting. Now, I personally don't use the render cache all that often, but I know lots of people do use it quite heavily. So this is quite a neat one. So back on the deliver page, let's jump over to something like H.265 master. Scroll down, there is an advanced settings. If we click that, we can expand those options. And within here, we've got a few useful things. We've got used optimized media and used proxy media. So rather than rendering out using the original source media, we can render out using the proxy media instead, which will obviously lower the quality, but may speed things up. Particularly useful if you're just trying to do something super quick. But there is used render cached images. And we can tick that. So you can see here, the render cache has given me this blue line across my entire timeline, which basically means my entire timeline has been cached in the background somewhere. So with that ticked, let's leave pretty much everything else as it is, and we will add this to the render queue, and then let's just render this out. And as you can see, it's whipping along really quite nicely. I'm getting nearly 200 frames per second. This is a 4K timeline. It's got some fusion on there. It's got a relatively heavy grade with the film look creator. I've got some magic zooms. I've got titles. I've got all this sort of stuff. And it's, yeah, it's, it's whipping along really quick because it's using that render cache. It's already done a lot of the hard work creating the cache in the background. So it's just using that now that it's come time to actually render the project meaning this seven minute project rendered out in just one minute and 12 seconds. Now, if we were to turn the render cached images off and then do this whole project once again, we can immediately see that this is gonna take a whole lot longer. Do let me know your thoughts, feelings, and any other ideas you have for videos down in the comments below. Take it easy. I'll see you in the next one.